There's an old movie theater near my apartment called The Music Box. I don't know if any of you have ever been there or heard of it. It's been a part of the neighborhood for almost 90 years. And it's one of those old movie houses with murals that go up the walls and onto the ceiling. A starry night with twinkling light bulbs stretches over the seats in the largest auditorium. And a pipe organ sits stage right, dating back to 1929. It's regularly played by the house organist. Pretty cool to have a movie theater with a house organist. The Music Box is one of my favorite places in Chicago. It plays art house movies and cult classics and has a fantastic selection of concessions. But in my opinion, the best thing about the music box are the sing-alongs. Throughout the holiday season, the music box hosts these joyful, chaotic sing-alongs for movies like Hocus Pocus and The Sound of Music. And one of my favorite movies, White Christmas. I've attended the movie sing-along for White Christmas every year since we moved to Chicago. It's my most beloved Chicago Christmas tradition. Everyone dresses up, there's a costume contest, and before the show even starts, there's 30 minutes of caroling led by Santa and accompanied by the house organist. It's just fantastic. My sister and I even have these matching shirts that I had specially made for this once a year occasion. But I had a realization this week. I won't be going to the music box this year. I won't be caroling to the pipe organ and I won't be caroling with all of you, at least not in person because this is 2020 and our holidays are happening in the midst of a raging pandemic. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Today's scripture can almost feel a little bit like a taunt. <laughs> when I first read it, I responded to the psalmist in my head. I would love to, I would love nothing more than to come into the sanctuary and sing to the Lord, but we can't, we can't. There are a lot of things we can't do right now. As a pastor on the brink of the holiday season, I am acutely aware of the difficult decisions we are making as a community and as individuals. I know someone listening to this sermon right now is making a difficult decision about Thanksgiving. I know someone listening right now is missing family they haven't seen yet this year. I know someone listening is wondering how to make Christmas gifts happen after months of unemployment. I know someone listening is feeling anxious about test results. I know someone listening is maybe feeling that crush of depression as we enter dark winter months. I know someone listening is missing being together in our sanctuary. To which the psalm says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into her presence with thanksgiving. These words still speak to us this morning. On this day, November 22nd, in the year of our Lord 2020, on this day, in the midst of ongoing difficulty, on this day, as we enter God's presence as mediated by Zoom, 
Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. Church, I challenge us to take that to heart this morning. I challenge us this morning to find the joy of worship. And that doesn't mean that we paper over our real pain or that we slap on a happy face. Rather, it means that we affirm both truths. The truth that this holiday season will be different and difficult. And the truth that God is still God. We're given a literal invitation this morning. Oh, oh come. The scripture is a waving hand that bids us enter the presence of the living God. I know we already had one call to worship this morning, but consider this your second invitation. Come on in. The water is good. Psalm 95 has been used this way as a welcome liturgy for centuries. It was likely a processional text for the Hebrew people, guiding their movement to the temple before a reading of Torah. And it was similarly used by the early Christian church as a way to invoke God's spirit in worship. When we hear these words, we join with worshipers throughout time and space, worshipers who themselves encountered difficult seasons and chose to worship anyways. This Psalm, it gives us both the how and the why of worship. First, the how, come and sing. Come and give thanks. Come and bow. Sing, give thanks, bow. We're off to a pretty good start this morning, Hyde Park Union Church. We have sung, we've given thanks, Pastor Veronica and I didn't even quite plan <laughs> that moment, but we have given thanks. Thank you, God, for your spirit. And we've bowed in prayer. But all of these actions, all of these wonderful rituals, they're stale without the why. Why do we sing? Why do we give thanks? Why do we bow? Well, Psalm helps us here as well. It provides three reasons. We worship because God is our salvation, our sovereign, and our shepherd. So first, salvation. The Psalm tells us that God is the rock of our salvation. It brings to mind another favorite hymn, Maybe you know it. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I wonder, for how many of us has this year felt like sinking sand? I wonder how many of us throughout our lives have tried to stand on something else, something other than God. Because there are plenty of things that we try to stand on, right? Things we think might save us. Money, politics, hard work, career, fame. There are plenty of things that promise to give our lives meaning. And they might even work for a while. But in the end, they all fade. Nothing compares to the firm, sustaining, solid rock of God. Nothing compares to Emmanuel, God with us. God is a firm foundation, an ever-present help in times of trouble, and that, that's a reason to worship. So number one, God is our salvation. Number two, God is our sovereign. 
And if you're like me, you might cringe a little at that word. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. That word makes me, because of who I am and, and what I've experienced, it makes me think of an overlord. And I don't know about you, but I've had enough of oppressive patriarchal leaders for one lifetime. So allow me to reframe this for us. Sovereign isn't just a noun. It can also be used as an adjective, meaning ultimate, powerful, unlimited, unrestrained, absolute. God is our absolute God. God is our ultimate. God is our power. Now this, can be a source of assurance, especially for those who have felt knocked down, who have been marginalized and oppressed, maybe like those 10 lepers that we heard about in the youth message this morning, to know that God is our power, to know in the depth of our soul and our bones that God can make a way when there is no way. That is such good news. And this can also be a bit of a challenge. I'll admit that it can be a challenge for me because I like to think that I'm in control. Am I the only one? That's okay if I am. I like to think that I'm in control. I like to think that my planning and my hard work will get me through. And because I'm a person with great privilege, I can be pretty blind to all the things that God has done in my life. I can look around and I can start to think that I did it all on my own. So let the language of this Psalm uplift you or humble you, whatever you might need this morning. God is our ultimate. God is our power. God is the unrestrained love of the universe. Oh, and that's a reason to worship. Number one, God is our salvation. Number two, God is our sovereign. Number three, God is our shepherd. For they are our God and we are the people of their pasture and the sheep of their hand. Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? We are the sheep of God's hand. It's an image that's familiar to all of us, Jesus as the good shepherd. Jesus, the one who looks for every single lost sheep. Jesus, the voice that comforts every lamb. Jesus, who guides us in paths of righteousness. This too is a descriptor of God that both comforts and challenges as needed. Listen to these verses from Ezekiel 34, 15 through 16. This was another text in the lectionary today. I challenge you to, to go and, and read all of it later. I myself, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will seek the lost. And I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Ooh, ooh, that just became one of my new scriptures. I will feed them with justice. That's, that's good. <laughs> the psalmist. The prophets, they know what they're doing. The role of the shepherd you see is complex. Jesus is not a one sheep fits all savior. He knows what each one of us need and what each one of us need in different times. Some of us need his tender healing. Some of us need to be reminded that we are so loved no matter where we go. And some of us need a healthy diet of justice to sit at the table and as one commentator put it, choke down a meal of grace alongside all of our siblings. Jesus, the loving shepherd, Jesus, the just shepherd, that's, 
that's a good reason to worship. So we have the how of worship and we have the why, but the psalmist has one other thing in store for us. The psalm ends with a prophetic turn. Oh, that today you would listen to God's voice. The psalm moves from invitation to worship to an exhortation to righteousness. The psalmist connects worship, the songs and the prayers to the day-to-day -day behavior of the people. This should remind us of the words of the prophet Isaiah, is not this the fast I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free? Throughout our holy book, we are told that worship must be connected to our day-to-day -day lives. Our worship should inform our daily choices, and our daily choices should inform our worship, creating a whole life of faith, a holistic, connected life of faith that consistently puts us in line with the heart of God. Oh, come let us sing to the Lord. My friends, we are faced with a lot of choices right now. From who we can safely see, to how we celebrate the holidays, to if we come to worship. It does not escape me that on Sunday mornings, all of you could be doing something different and you have chosen to come to worship. And even though we're here, it, it can sometimes maybe feel hard to follow the psalmist's instructions. It may feel hard to sing and celebrate God. Yet if I have learned anything during this pandemic, it's that God is still God. God is still even now, our savior and our sovereign and our shepherd. When things are scary, God is still God. When things are overwhelming and oh my goodness, are things overwhelming right now, God is still God. When things are infuriating, God is still God. When things are a complete and total mess, God is still God. The psalmist says, God's hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains, the sea and the dry land and each one of us. So let us choose to worship. Let us grasp the cup of grace. Let it overflow and drink deeply. Let us sing and dance and remind ourselves that we are the beloved ones of God. Oh, come, come hear the voice of God, come and worship, amen.